Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jerry Stanley from Bulwark Technologies India, handling sales of health system solutions. Uh, I welcome you all on behalf of Bulwark Technologies and Health Systems. I'd like to introduce our panelist, uh, JC Pearson, Product Manager for RPA Automate from Bulwark Technologies. Shane Cooper, Director of Sales for Automation Solutions from Health Systems, APAC. Tim Shaw, Solutions Architect from Health Systems. Uh, once again, welcome to you all to our RPA, uh, RPA webinar. Over to you, JC. Thank you, uh, Jerry. Uh, so today, our webinar is on RPA Automate for your organization. And these are your presenters who Jerry had already spoke about. So the agenda for the day today is an introduction to the value added distributor bulwark um, about help system and the RPA Automate overview used cases that uh, has brought value to the organization. And finally, the demonstration by our technical expert. So Bulwark has been on the cybersecurity space uh, for information technology uh, solutions. We have been over 21 years in the Middle East. And since 2017, we have set up our office in India. Uh, due to our expansion and our wide network, we have established a dedicated office in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia this year. We have over 22 plus technology vendors and over 700 business partners with Middle East and India. Uh, Bulwark has also an excellent track record in delivering products and excellent customer service for the world class products. We have the best of breed technology vendors. We only choose the niche vendors with niche products. We have offering award winning products with the excellent service. Uh, we are actually an extended arm of the security vendors whom we represent in the region, uh, selling the IT products and solution through our reseller channel. We have a dedicated sales marketing and certified technical team. Uh, that's all about Bulwark. Now I pass on to Shane, over to you. Excellent. Well, look, uh, hello everyone and uh, and thank you for taking the time today and, uh, and nice to meet you. So I'm gonna just cover a, a few slides on health systems. So in terms of health systems, the company, We've been around for nearly 40 years and uh, have over about over 30,000 customers worldwide with an annual revenue surpassing 500 million USD. Our support is second to none and easily achieved by our 30 plus offices globally. Many customers that have been with us for 20 plus years might think of us still as an IBM I business, but we're certainly much more these days. While our headquarters is located just outside Minneapolis in the US, we have sales, support and development offices strategically positioned. In the APAC region, we have offices in Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Singapore and Malaysia, with Tim and I located in Perth, Western Australia. Help systems acquisitions focus on two of the biggest pain points in IT today, security, and automation. We have a number of products and they can be summarized into six key areas as seen here. Before we narrow our conversation today down to automation, specifically robotic process automation, I wanted to cover quickly some of the most recent acquisitions as you'll no doubt recognize these companies. In 2021 alone, we acquired six security businesses focusing on data loss, to advanced email security, vulnerability management, to file transfer. Bulwark did mention to me that Titus and Bolden James are very popular in India and the Middle East, which makes sense due to the focus of data classification. These businesses aren't listed here, they were acquired over two years ago already. RPA is certainly transforming the way businesses operate, allowing them to scale by increasing productivity and improving accuracy. Our customers are using our automated RPA solution to integrate front-end 
and back-end automation workflows across the organization. This could be anything from drag and drop task development, event-based triggers and conditions, database connectivity, multi-machine execution, simulated user application interaction, and data extraction and transformation. We have over 3,500 Automate RPA customers globally, and I'm sure you'll recognize some of these logos, especially Starbucks, Honda, Toyota, Nokia, and Nike. One of the biggest questions we're asked is how we compare with our competitors. It's a great question and one we're happy to answer. There are a couple of key areas that differentiate us. Firstly, we provide no code automation, which makes Automate RPA extremely user friendly for non technical users. Customers can create workflows through drag and drop technology using our 600 plus predefined automation actions. Secondly, our licensing starts at a few thousand dollars per annum for our single installation desktop solution. For those bigger organizations, we offer an enterprise license that provides unrestricted bots or agents, which is very appealing when considering total cost of ownership and scalability for all other parts of the organization. These two areas quickly position Automate RPA as a very compelling offering with an extremely timely return on investment. So that's uh, the slides that I wanted to cover from, uh, from a, a help system and sort of our Automate RPA perspective. So I'll hand over to Tim. Okay, so thanks everybody for joining this short demo. Hopefully you can see my screen, which should have a web browser and an Excel spreadsheet on it. Yeah, Tim. Great. So, what we want to do with this little demo is just illustrate how easy it is to build a very simple automation with the automate tool and introduce a workflow. So in this example, what we have here is uh, imagine the scenario. We've got this spreadsheet here, which has some weather observation locations in this web browser. We are going to a meteorological website. And what, what we actually want to do is be able to click through the website and be able to select the weather observations that are appropriately listed down here. So normally, if we were having to do this manually, of course, we would uh, go through this sort of process of highlighting and copying and pasting that data into uh, our spreadsheet. And then the end goal here might be that we actually have to, we fill all this form in, we find all the data, we fill it in, we save the spreadsheet. We might then have to email that spreadsheet off to somebody. The point is that if we were having to do this on a daily basis, you can sort of see how fiddly it is that we've got to read the data off the screen and you know be able to copy it and so on. And then we try and find different ways of dealing with that data. So let's go through a better way of dealing with that. So let's automate this process so that we can run this really at any time of the day or night, you know, 24 hours a day. We've got effectively a robot doing it for us. So what we'll do is we'll go into uh, the automate uh, environment and we'll create a new task. Oh, get weather results. Let's call it that. So this is actually what what some people call a bot. It's in uh, RPA automate terms. This is actually a uh, a task that we are building, but it is a task that can be repeated many many times. So let's just go. We just need to locate where that file is. That's all good. So what we're going to do is first thing that we need to pick up is the website that we want to go to. Now, what you'll notice down the left hand side here is there are a load of actions and so we could scroll through them. But the key point here is that automated is so easy that we can do this through a recording mechanism. So rather than us having to scroll through that list of actions to find what we want to do, we'll use a recorder and we'll tell 
uh, automate what we actually want to do. Uh, bom.gov.au. So we'll tell it to open that website. And so what this will now do is it will launch Chrome for us and it will connect obviously to the website URL that we provided. What will happen is that the recorder will then disappear because now it's waiting for an action. So what we want to do is basically mimic everything that we did manually. So we click on Perth. That's where we want to get our weather from. And what we can do here is say, well, I just want to click. We can also provide a bit more uh, relevant uh, description here. So just because it's uh, it'll be a bit easier to read. And so what we can then do is actually execute that particular step. And so what we do, we've we've executed that step. We'll then select another step that we want to go and execute, which of course is clicking through uh, the uh, state. So we'll do that, and again, we'll get the uh, information popping up. The recorder will pop up, so we're going to interact with. Uh, uh, we'll just call it the WA, and we'll then execute that particular step. So you can see it's doing it all for us as we go through. So we're we're building this robot, this task that mimics everything that we want it to want to do within our uh, activity, within our task. So we'll just get down to this particular screen. Wait for it to pop up again. So click on Perth area. Click on that, and we'll then execute that particular step. So we're down in here. So now what we actually want to do is we want to get the low temp and the high temp. So once again, what we're going to do is interact. And we're going to get this data. Now this time, what we're going to do is say that we want to actually get the low temperature. And we'll just give this again a description. Uh, we'll call it low temp. And we will execute that. And then we want to grab the high temp for the day. Uh, we will then high temp. And we'll say high temp. And we'll just execute that step. OK, so at this point, that's what we want to do with our interaction with a website. So we can simply save and close that. The web browser will disappear. You see it's now gone off the bottom of my screen. But what we're left with now in our uh, designer environment is just the information from the recording itself. So now what we want to do is we want to actually introduce the Excel component. But before I do that, I know that we need to actually introduce a couple of variables into our environment as well, into our little robot, into our task. And we'll give it a value of two. And we'll also add a site name. And we'll just call that one weekly. So we've added a couple of variables here. But what you've noticed is I haven't had to use any programming here at all. It's purely drag and drop from here or by clicking on the appropriate action here. And we just fill in a form. So what we now want to do then is open our Excel spreadsheet because that's the thing that's actually going to drive our automation for us. So what we will do here is we will open a file and we will open that particular file like that. So we've opened the Excel spreadsheet. And what we want to then do is we still want to, the web browser to open 
and we want it to go through to do the selection down to the point where we select our data. But in this area here, this is where we need to introduce some extra steps which allow us to effectively iterate over information that we're going to find in our Excel spreadsheet. So remember, there's actually a list in our Excel spreadsheet, which indicates the stations that we are actually interested in. So once again, we'll go into Excel. So we'll drag across Excel. So now what we want to do is we want to actually get information from a particular um, cell. And so what we're going to do is populate a variable, which will be our site name. And we will extract the information from our current row. So we'll tell it that we're going to use the current row. So we will get that information from our Excel spreadsheet. And then what we will do is we will do a loop. And what we want to do now is once we've got our data is we actually want to loop over our um, with an with an actually loop with an expression. And the expression that we want to do is we want to actually build an expression. Once again, you can see I'm not having to really do too much here. It's all point and click. I know what I actually want to do is I want to do a string comparison. So we can go down here and find a function that will deal with uh, some string information for me. Oops, not that one. I've got to be that. So you want to select that one. And the strings that I want to use are the var site name. So let's just go and find my var site name. And I want it to be empty. And the comparison is that. And while that's the result of that is not equal to zero. So loop while the expression is, two, is true. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the, the site name, compare it with the value that we're actually going to get from our spreadsheet. So while that's true, then what we want to do is actually interrogate our web page to extract the appropriate information. So we're going to uh, interrogate the web page. And what we're going to have to do here, in fact, I know we just need to uh, go in and grab some extra data, which I've got preloaded. And I will just grab that data. And in this situation, because we want to vary the data that we are picking up, what I want to do is actually grab it in a slightly different fashion. So this is the probably the only area where you need to have a bit of uh, only a little bit of knowledge of the web page that you are actually dealing with. So that's low temp. And I need to do a similar thing with high temp as well. I will just grab that piece of information. So we will just go in here and locate by attributes, add in the value and uh, headers. Don't care about the restriction, the interaction. There we go. So it's going to store it in our variable uh, named high temp. So we've grabbed the data from the web page. Now, what we actually need to do is extract from that web data. Uh, one of the things that you find with all web applications is you can get a bit finicky about the type of, uh, about the attributes when you are extracting information. So I just happen to know that that field we uh, selected on, what it was doing was actually giving us more information than we required. So what I'm going to do here is just grab uh, the uh, minimum and maximum temperature values. And 
put them into these variables here. So I'm going to grab that and just make sure I have my right correct variable names and put it into uh, low temp and do the same thing with high temp. So I could actually overwrite the name or I know that that name's actually incorrect without you know having to type anything. I can just double click and select the appropriate name. So you can see how easy it is to start to develop in this sort of environment. Ooh. And actually, that's the one I really want. Place found text into low temp. That's it. So we've got the text that we want. Then what we want to do is actually write that information into our Excel spreadsheet in the appropriate location. So what we're going to do is actually set the value of a cell. So we're going to put it into by reference and our cell reference is always going to be uh, a B because that's where we want for our low temp and the, the reference is current row. Okay, so it's going to be B current row. And what are we going to do? We're going to set its value to um, uh, min temp, the minimum temperature or low temp is going to go there. So we're going to put that in and then we're going to do the same thing with our high temperature as well. So set the cell value. So in this case, it's going to be set by reference. And in this case, the cell reference is going to change to uh, column C. And once again, I just need to select my, make sure it goes in current row. And the value I want to put in there is my high temp, like that. Okay, so we've written our text in there. Now, the only other thing that we need to do, of course, is because we want to go and get um, the next record, if you like, or the next site from within our spreadsheet, then what we want to do is increment the current row by one. And then we actually want to repeat this uh, particular uh, piece of, of action of getting some text and just copy and paste that information in there. There we go. So we, if, if the site name consists of a space, then we just need to uh, to modify that site name. And in fact, I probably should have that up there as well. Okay, so replace the occurrence. So the reason why I need to do that is because in the header information that we have here in our attribute for matching, we need that. Uh, we don't allow spaces in there. So that's a simple task that we've done. So all we need to do now is we could actually go and edit that recording if we wanted to make any tweaks to it, or we could just simply run our uh, task that we've just built. So there's the spreadsheet. There's our website opening up again. And what we should now see is we start to click through. If you can notice just at the back here, you'll see. Uh, green, that indicates the step that we are executing. Ah, oh, we got an error there. That's okay. So what we've got here is it's popped up with an error at this location. So it says no uh, element matched that particular uh, or specified criteria. So let's just have a look what we forgot to do there. So I possibly, yeah. 
possibly know that I didn't actually copy the entire text. Or that, but that's okay. So we go in here. And this illustrates how easy it is to actually do debugging in this environment as well. So let me just close those two windows, close the two applications that we had open. Should be all good now. So we've done a little bit of debugging. You can see the, the building and debugging, everything is done through this tool here, through our design tool. So we'll run again. We're clicking through, we can see the green pointer at the back that indicates where we are up to in our execution. And now what you can see in our spreadsheet is that the data is being updated as appropriate. Now, that's actually run successfully, uh, but you'll notice we've still got Excel and the other, and the Chrome browser open. That's because we haven't actually closed the uh, applications down. So what we can do, we can just simply add uh, another action at the bottom, just simply drag and drop an action in there to close our web browser. So close our web session one. And similarly with Excel, we can go and kill off Excel as well. So we can close our workbook. Now, this will actually happen very quickly. Uh, that was the one. And we obviously want to save it. So we can close that and close that. So that is our basic task. So the next thing that we would typically want to do once we've actually built a task is then build a workflow because we don't want to have to uh, sit and launch this activity daily ourselves, we want the uh, system to be able to do it for us. That's the whole point of us having an automated environment. So what we've got is a workflow here. So what I'm going to do here is just quite simply associate that particular activity that we've just created, which was that one, with this workflow. Now, what I'm going to attempt to do is actually run this on my local PC. What I could do as well, if I wanted to, I'd say, okay, well, actually, I want this to run on a daily basis. So I could introduce here a, uh, a condition, a schedule, basically. So I could say, I want to actually execute this uh, perhaps on an hourly basis or specific days of the week. Oops, let's launch it on uh, all working days in our week. And we'll have a launch date. We can set some time in the future, say at 3.40 every day. And if we miss the schedule or miss the trigger, then we just run it immediately. So this is just actually going to execute on a schedule. And we could actually introduce multiple schedules into our environment if we wanted to. So we've got our uh, workflow built. So there's our get weather results. It's going to execute on a remote server. Then we're going to run a task that's going to copy the file to from our remote execution environment to our server. And then we're going to generate an email. So let's see how we go. We'll run that. So it's going to launch that activity. Now, unfortunately, this stage, you actually, you guys on the uh, presentation here on the webinar I won't actually see anything executing because it's actually doing it on my local PC. So I see an execution box that pops up. But this is the whole point of doing remote execution is that it's supposed to be a remote uh, activity that we're dealing with. And so you don't typically notice anything. It's interactive, it's all remote, and it's all going to run and do things. So it's now launched the um, Excel environment. I can show you that. I can probably drag that across. 
So that's the spreadsheet that has opened and it's now opening, hopefully opening the web browser. Yep, we've got a web browser open. So it's opened the web browser for us. Again, this is happening on my local PC and it's waiting for the web browser to become ready. And then it should start going through its uh, process of clicking through and selecting what we want it to select. So we can see it's now going through. It's doing the click through for us as to Western Australia. Waiting for the page, web page. Yep, goes the latest observations. Then down in our spreadsheet, we should then see the data down here starting to change. That's completed. The file gets saved. And then what will happen is that it's going to copy the file from my local server back to a central server to do the actual emailing of that uh, Excel document. So it's now launched the uh, robot activity to just do the simple copy of the data. It's going to copy that file remotely. It's doing this. This does take a little bit of time because it's over a VPN connection. So it's done that. It's now completed that. And it should now then go on to the task to actually do an email. And I will pop up my basic email client. And what we should have is an email that's just turned up. And in that email, we have our document that we've just received, which is our Excel spreadsheet with the weather station on it. So that's literally how easy it is to create uh, an activity and a workflow within Automate to uh, do something such as copying data, screen scraping, you know, copying data from a website, interacting with a website, and generating an email and giving you, I'll just drag it across, some final output. Okay. What you'll notice also in terms of building workflows is everything revolves around a task, but we've also got flow control mechanisms for the tasks that we are linking together. So we can determine we've got rendezvous points, for example, we can evaluate uh, criteria, sort of test criteria based upon output from activities. And in particular, we've got events and conditions as well. So we can use these all of these things as triggering mechanisms within the automate environment. So the final piece that I just wanted to mention here was the, uh, as Shane mentioned earlier, we have a bot store. So botstore.helpsystems.com. And what we've got in here, you can see we've got 197 pre-built bots. So you can just literally select something you're interested in. So like Active Directory, I can go and have a look and say, okay, well, okay, I might want to create lots of users, you know, do a bulk user creation um, through Active Directory. I can click through that. It tells me what we can do with this bot. The key thing is what you're actually getting if you download one of these bots is you get the you you are getting the automate code. Let's call it automate code instructions for the uh, task. But once you've downloaded it and brought it into your environment, you can modify it to suit your purposes. A lot of these bots are actually all built as as generic type bots, so they're. Uh, you know, they, they are generic and, and thus they are very flexible. But you can see we've got integration with these bots with a large number of third party applications as well. So things like Google Drive, HubSpot, Jira, LinkedIn. And to assist you in your journey as well with Automate, uh, once you download it, you can hop onto the Automate Academy. You can just enroll 
and then you get access to all of the online training for automate as well so you can be really productive literally within a, a morning of downloading and installing automate you can start to be productive so that's just what i wanted to show you from a demonstration perspective of automate thanks back to you jc Thank you, Tim, for that uh, great presentation on the new feature that is of uh, recording, as well as showing how uh, information is scraped from the web, uh, put into Excel, automated mails sent with the attached information. So something which is done on a regular basis, this can always be done and automated. So uh any questions let me check on the chat for some questions uh oh yeah we have a question here and that is is rpa automate having intelligence is that for you tim i think it probably is yeah it's so it would depend on the level of intelligence you want so if you are dealing with structured data then what you would want to be looking at is the Automate Intelligent Capture product, which is an extra product that uh, is available in the Automate suite. Um, so, sorry, if you're dealing with unstructured data, yes. Yeah. So, if you were wanting to process things such as uh, invoices or purchase orders, where information is, you know what the information is on that piece of uh, paper, if you like, because you can uh, use image, you can take image scans or PDFs and extract that sort of information from it. As long as you know where your data is and you can train the product to find your data, that's where you're starting to bring in the intelligence within your document processing environment. If it's purely structured data, then what you will find within Automate uh, is the ability to uh, use OCR, so we have optical character recognition, and also be able to examine PDFs and, and basically break those apart and extract data. As long as it's, uh, if it's structured, do it purely in Automate. If you're dealing with a large amount of unstructured data, then Automate Intelligent Capture is the additional product that you would be interested in. Uh, thanks, uh, Tim. I hope that has answered uh, the question uh, posted by the attendee. Um, another thing for Shane, there's a question here. Uh, what all languages does Automate support? Is it for uh, Shane? Yeah, not probably best for Tim, that one. Sure, I can take that question. So. Out of the box, in terms of if you're dealing with OCR type data, it supports, of course, most of the well, Western languages. Um, we actually use, and like a lot of uh, competing products, we use the uh, Tesseract engine. So whatever Tesseract supports, we also support that. Automate Intelligent Capture also supports most Western languages as well. And in fact, Tesseract, I do believe, also supports uh, some of the Asian languages. So that's what gives us a leg up uh, in that particular marketplace. All right. Thank you, Tim. And that's about it from the questions. We don't have any other questions posted. Uh, so, if there is any further questions from the attendees, we will be posting the video shortly. Uh, but if there are any further questions in GCC and Mina, you can post that to me, JCPSN, my email address and my contact number is mentioned. And in India, Jerry is your person, his email number and the contact details. So nothing more to add. Okay. Thank you all. Actually, JC, we've got a question from uh, Ahmed. Uh -huh. uh, what is the hardware requirement for implementation 
and staff training as well. So hardware requirements are, if you're going with something like um, Automate Plus or Automate Ultimate, you need to have a server that's large enough uh, to run the execution engine and also the management server. So typically we would recommend somewhere around, around about 16 gig uh, Windows VM. If you're distributing agents to local users' desktops, then whatever a user has on their desktop memory-wise is typically good enough, which these days most PCs come with a minimum of eight gigabytes. So that's for the requirements, you know, for the automate type stuff. But of course, you've got to take into account the applications that you are running as well. So if you're running a, um, a large data warehouse application in a Windows environment, uh, then you've obviously got to take that into account as an as an as an overhead uh, with that plus the automate components that you want to execute as well. And uh, Ahmed has also mentioned about training. So Ahmed, just to let you know, uh, Tim has already shown us about the academy. And from the academy, once the staff goes through all the lessons in the academy, he is fine to start building the bots. And he can also post any cases which he is not clear on once they are part of the um, Automate Club, where the solution will also be provided by the help systems experts. And that's what I can tell you about the training. So you don't need an elaborate developer, as Tim has mentioned. You just go through the academy classes, try creating them on Automate, and then you are fine to create your own uh, processes and workflows. I hope that answered your question. Otherwise, you can always email us for further information. Well, I see no more questions. Anything from the panel? No, I, I think, uh, you know, thank you for the opportunity, Paul, what to, uh, to present um, well, to your, your attendees, your customer base, prospective customer base. I mean, if, there's, uh, if there are any outstanding questions or, or any Kind of follow up demonstrations or, or actions required. Let us know, um, but uh, we're obviously super keen to uh, to to show everyone and anyone automate out the ad. Okay then. So we are closing the webinar. Thank you all. Take care and goodbye. Thank you. Yes, bye. Thank you. Thank you.